All right, so there is a nice, smooth, easy algebra move that will solve this thing for us pretty easily. But if you have any doubt about your algebra ability or you just tend to make careless mistakes, then don't do that move. It is maybe a little bit conceptually more difficult than just solving for x. But uh, regardless, we always have Desmos that can solve equations for us. So if you have any doubts and you don't want to make a mistake, go to Desmos and just type it in. 9 times 4 minus 3x plus 2 equals 8 times 4 minus 3x plus 18. And let's double check that it's right. So let's go all the way back to the front. Make sure you type it right. 9 times 4 minus 3x plus 2 is equal to 8 times 4 minus 3x plus 18. Looks good. We're going to get a vertical line where the solution is because there's only one variable. It is at negative 4. And that is it. Done. Except that's not what they wanted. Right? They wanted 4 minus 3x. So this is a trap. Right? And it, it's so easy to fall for because we, you know, uh, feel like we, we've accomplished something. Once we are done with algebra, and we get our x equals moment, but the SAT knows that and they're going to take advantage of it. So we got to make sure we do the last step here, which is just plug in negative 4 for x and solve that. So 4 plus 12 is 16. That's the answer. So, um, you know, it's easy to make that mistake, right? Especially because look, if I, if I open Desmos, at least on my screen, it's covering the part that matters most. I do find that when I take practice SATs and the real SAT, the Desmos screen is the most annoying thing about taking the digital SAT. It shows up and it's either small and you can't read the Desmos stuff well, or it's big and you can't see the question very well. And, and it just like, you can't put it out of the way. It's just, I don't know, it frustrates me. But here would be a case where it could cause me to get a question wrong because I'm not reading the question anymore. I'm just kind of reading the calculator and missing this important fact. So that is a reminder that no matter what, if you are asked to do algebra, double check that you are giving them what they want at the end because they will very often just tweak it slightly to see if you were paying attention. So the answer that you would get for X or for whatever the variable is will be an answer. They know that you're going to be tempted to pick it. So it, you can't rely on it just like not being there. It will be there. Now, in this case, because 4 minus 3x seems kind of random to us, it, it, you know, it, we might not notice that it's also in the equation itself. That's what makes this have a little bit of a shortcut if we understand how to do algebra uh, in a more kind of next level way. Most of you, though, don't, and you wouldn't even think to do this. You would just, out of habit, distribute the 9, distribute the 8, combine like terms, and solve for x and get x equals negative 4 anyway. And so you might still fall for the same trap. But there is a little bit of a shortcut that we can do, and it's useful for not necessarily this question, but the SAT sometimes involves situations where we are not really solving for a variable itself, but for a group of variables, a group of letters and numbers. So we should get in that habit and see if I subtract 8 times 4 minus 3x from both sides as, an, as a group. I can do that because 4 minus 3x is kind of like its own little term. So 9 4 minus 3x's and 8 4 minus 3x's are kind of the same thing. We can combine them, and so we would get 1 4 minus 3x. Now let's finish the job, though. Let's get this 2 out of there, and let's put that over there, and there it is. Now I have some extra pieces because 1 times 4 minus 3x is just 4 minus 3x, and that's what we wanted, and 16 is the answer, and so it does have a very quick algebra solution. But I think most people are not good enough at algebra to have the confidence to do that or to have the ability to see that shortcut. So if you do the algebra, you're going to do it the long way anyway. And I think most people make more careless mistakes in algebra than they admit to. And so the benefit of Desmos is as long as you type it right, it's going to give you a reliable number. And then it's really just on you to make sure that you read the question before you put that number down. But most people are better reading than they are doing math. So my hope is that that Desmos path leads us to the most likely um, amount of correct answers. Comment if you think I'm wrong, comment your experience, but that's what I would have done on this. I, you know, Desmos, I, I like to rest my brain as well and let the computer solve as much as possible so I can save my brain for when I really need it.